All right. So once again, it is time to start the GSSR giveaways. Uh, as always, I do NA first. And then once NA is over, I start up the one specifically for JP. Now, if you play on JP, you can still enter this giveaway uh, and I will send you the money uh, so you can buy the GSSR on JP. However, you want to deal with it, whether I buy it for you when it's time or I refill, whatever. Uh, just to be clear. So as I'm recording it, it has not started. This is going to start at uh, at the time of this video is released. That is going to be 3 p.m. on June 2nd. So, uh, big, uh, big thing to note. Starting at 350, uh, I will be adding another uh, winner to the giveaway, and then at, starting at 400, uh, it will go 500, 600. That's when I'll add extra winners. So the closer. Like the closer I can get to a thousand, five hundred, whatever, the better. Uh, more people can win. Uh, but at, just as a last thing before I fully go through this, um, if you don't have the, if you, if you don't have money to, like, actually buy GSSRs and you don't think you're gonna win, uh, I as a point reward I give away GSSRs. I haven't really done it because most people don't have enough points for it at this time. Uh, that's just how schedules go for people. But that is a reward in my uh, Twitch chat. If you're there for a long time, I have no problem buying a GSS GSSR. Um, if the points are too high for it, I'll probably I can lower it. But I stream often enough that people have a chance to like actually get the points. And it's not like GSSR is come like every month it's like twice a year per server so yeah i just wanted to say that first uh so yeah uh, yeah so the ways to enter it's visit the youtube but it's actually you have to be subbed uh visiting the youtube is just like to fill it uh following on twitch Follow on Twitter and uh, retweeting the tweet for this are just going to be how you enter. There are, there are no paid entries for this giveaway. And yeah, with that, we can actually get down to seventh anniversary breakdown. So unlike last time, uh, chat, you are not picking my GSSR on my main account reason being is i'm at the point where this honestly would probably be one of the best banners for me for a new servant but mm -mm. I'll, and i'll go through all these but tldr there are a lot of dead banners for you now that it's just not worth picking on um uh yeah okay so this is the banner i plan on rolling on reason being is abigail as a consolation because i've never gone abigail but if i also get mp2 kiara nice uh these two it's whatever i can make them work at this current point but the big thing is trying to get mp2 melt melt is a character i really really like i'm waiting for them to buffer mp and but because of like serving coin bullshit, uh she is not able to start from zero uh because i do not have her append uh her mana loading append unlocked i have her extra attack unlocked because i at not gonna say at the current time i didn't think she'd get it but i thought i would have summoned for mp2 by now and uh i just didn't have the money at the time <laughs> so from pretty much from now on gssr's on my main account is gonna try to be, get melt uh there will be some exceptions but that's how i'm feeling right now just based on what characters i actually have in this, on this game all right so let's go through the gssr's and then after that uh i'll go through the rest of the seventh anniversary 
So first banner has a lot of older characters. Now Nero is always going to be good. Uh, just as a generic support, uh, she works really, really well with quick because quick servants need as much MP gain as possible. Uh, they eat it up more than they do a quick buff as crazy as that sounds. It like it's, it's different from arts, arts wants arts buffs and MP gain quick. They kind of want more MP gain at this point. Uh, Musashi really good. Uh, she's going to right now in NA, she does not have her first skill buff, which literally doubles her hits for three turns. I think this is like one of the best buffs for her and it just makes her function as a self-sustaining unit so much better. And she's also hardest hitting uh saber in the game. So there's that too. Uh, Shiki's able to black rail loop now. Uh, do some insta kill shenanigans. I eventually do want to get Shiki on my account. And if it wasn't for melt, I would be summoning on this banner. I, I this is a promise. Like I'm pretty sure there is no melt banner. Yep. Nope. No melt banner, unfortunate. Uh, but yeah. <sighs> All right, so Arthur. Everyone is waiting for Arthur to get either an MP buff or get this buff. He is drastically far behind for pretty much any kind of farming situation like he is very far behind damage wise he's not able to do double bitch setups uh and even like multi-core it's not that good for him like if you would if you wanted to do multi-core like you would just use someone else other than arthur as like his competition does like almost does more than 50 50 percent more damage than himself like yes the super large but super large isn't as common as you would hope and then you have Siegfried who at higher copies is just straight up going to do more damage You're, and you see dragons more than you see super large it feels like and also dragon supply to servants like yes this is a really good strong skill and he does folk he does work better if you treat him more as a crit dps but his mp does not hit as as hard as it should he needs uh better setups uh okita i hate i hate how they buffed kikuchi i hate this this is like I don't want to say she needs to get double buffed, but I almost want to say she needs to get double buffed because this does not like he could function in multi-core, but this is only a 30 battery. And then her competition is a Stolfo and Medusa. I know Medusa isn't out on JP yet. But Saber Medusa is really, really, really fucking good. And in no way is Okita really competing with uh, Medusa. Like, Okita does not have a buffed MP, but getting to her MP you requires face guards. You're not looping Okita's MP. It is very likely you'll loop Saber Medusa's MP, and then you'll also have a uh, damage bonus and a whole lot. Medusa will just get stronger. Um, I really like Okita. Like, I want to get this character, but it's just like... <laughs> it would work better if I actually had MB2 melt already. I swear I actually would have gone on this banner. This genuinely did have the most reward for me. Uh, outside getting Sigur. I do, I am very historic in saying I do not like this character. They have done him so fucking dirty. I like him as a character. I don't like him as a playable character. 
if that makes sense to people. All of his skills, they do not work as a crit DPS because you just burn through everything so goddamn fast. Yes, it works better now that it's not all one turn, like you can slightly spread it out, but you're not, like this stuff is gonna go pop, pop, pop. Like you're gonna burn through this so quickly. All of his skills can be used in a single turn. So even if you are double stacking with bitch, you are not actually double stacking. You are, you just have all the skills up for two turns. That's it. I, I don't see that much value in that. I just don't. There are chance, there are definitely highs you can hit, but the lows are super high highs if you set it up right but also abysmal lows that are is carried by a bitch. And like even this MP, I would say Siegfried as an AoE is a more consistent option than uh, Sigurd. And genu generally, I would choose Siegfried over Sigurd. Even for pretty best, because bitch, bitch will do the same to both of them, but at least uh, Sumanai's buffs last a little longer. All right, this is the first banner. We're not really going to go through the four stars because I don't think you should be summoning on a GSR for four stars. But as a nice bonus, you do get Salter on here and Nero. And, uh, Bran. Out of, out of all these, those are the three, like, big ones that you'd uh, be happy to get. Next banner. Oh, this is, this is so much better. Uh, yeah, significantly better. Uh, Abugi, I think she needs a buff uh, at this point uh like her attack buff being hit based a little different from sigurd just because if you're farming it doesn't really matter that much uh and it's only her attack buff that is uh hit based but yeah like e like and the thing is even with uh I'm bring it over here Okay, so even if a boogie had, um, even if her uh, attack buff is not hit based anymore, it's flat for tur three turns, that doesn't actually change her damage. Her damage is still going to be sa the same. It's just now you can actually use face cards uh, and your extra attack is not going to get fucked. Because in any circumstance with Ibuki, her extra attack will never be buffed by her attack buff. It is, it is impossible to get an extra attack with an attack buff with Ibuki because it's only three hits. So no matter what, no matter how many uh, extra hits you get up from Vich, you still will only have three hits. And in comparison to like all these other characters, like they're hitting 300,000 because they can use Black Rail. Now, I'm not saying Ibuki needs to be able to use Black Rail, but I mean, out of these options, she is the only one with a, uh, a 50 battery. If Ibuki was able to use Black Rail, I think that would be like make her stand out and like, especially because Salter can do it. Like, Salter can do it, and her damage is ridiculous at MP1. Remember, this is MP1 damage for Salter, and she just blows anything Ibuki can do at the water. I do think Ibuki is, like, a lot more comfy as, like, a crit DPS, but Farmer, if she's not Black Rail looping, she's not going to pass up her comp. But she is a very, I really like her design. Uh, Astolfo, again, same, similar to Okita, or yeah, similar to Okita, where Saber Medusa just fun, like does his job and like functions better as a single target uh, quick Saber. Uh, Okitan and Charlemagne, both are very good. Both are interchangeable. They both loop 
very well like art servants as quick servants. Uh, Muramasa, he has fallen off because they have not buffed him. And Yamato Takeru is far, far superior as an arts DPS. Uh, Muramasa is now like fully relegated as uh, a crit DPS with uh, AoE to him. I think if you think of, of him like that, is it, it just works better for him. Uh, you save his uh, second skill for like a really good crit turn where the enemy has an invul proc and he will just do good, good crit damage. But I don't think at this point going for MP1 Muramasa is not worth it. When MP1 Takaru is just even like a lot better. My thoughts on the Trunk Sisters have changed. I think they're really good as uh, sub DPSs for like multi core. Uh, I was actively using them for farming purposes and it actually worked really really well uh like especially multi-core arts where i actually do need like the extra refund they function just really well uh they refund well too so you don't have to worry too much about batteries with them they can keep the party going uh using with Tomo, and you just have really 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 high uptime on all your skills uh do i think there's better than dio scurry i uh, they're sub dps i i would still pick dio scurry because they actually do good crit damage and can like have good sustained crit damage all right betty emma uh she has very very high highs and even her floor isn't that bad Yeah, no, Benny Emma is just a solid servant. She also works really well with multi-core. She is just like more crit focused while doing party support and Trunk Sisters are like actual sub DPSs. <sighs> Next, for me personally, oh yeah, so for me, I have too many of these servants. In fact, I have every single one of these servants on my main account, which uh, I didn't even realize at this current point. So literally every single one of these is MP2 or higher. And these three are MP2 and these four are MP3. So wouldn't someone on here. This one is immediately dead because if I pull Gilgamesh, that's a USO. Yes, I would get the servant coins I need to actually get them to 120, but fuck trying to get a USO. I don't want it. I do want Moriarty. Sport Toria is even better than she used to be because she got a buff. In case you didn't know, she actually has a battery now uh, and ignore evasion. So Squirtoria is the, if you thought she was a good looper now, like she's even better now. No slow starts. I do, like I said, I want Moriarty uh, and I probably will summon for him uh, at the end of the year uh, to try and also get uh, Emiya Alter. Like these two will be on a rate up. And Ishtar, I've just gotten on too many accounts. And with an MP5 Gilgamesh, what the fuck is Ishtar supposed to actually do? Like, I, we know what buffs Gilgamesh uh, has on the way. He's going to get his MP damage up. And Ishtar has not gotten anything so far. Or gotten anything recently. I think they need to make her able to Black Rail Loop. She has the same setup that Tiamat has that Ishtar easily can do. Um, yeah. So want these two but this is a dead banner to me um also on this banner you got bargus that's that's enough said bargus and saito big prizes this one uh the prizes are fujino because she's rarer and they really like just buffing her like she has gotten she's gotten like really good buffs the last few uh last few years like she went from getting no buffs to like a lot more buffs this banner, uh, I really like Say as the character, uh, her archer form, not so much. It takes so much for all her niches to line up. It's just, you're rarely ever gonna have full power. You're at best, you're gonna have one. 
or no at best you'll have two but you'll consistently be at least one with her uh darcher ridiculously good looper i still prefer zenobia because whenever i use darcher she, her crits always hit like wet noodles and yeah and but i'm biased with zenobia i have like mp5 on multiple accounts and just mp1 darcher cannot compare um but yeah, like no matter what your MP level, her crit damage is still going to be very, very weak because uh, she doesn't really have the bust herself. Giga Chad, Super Ryan. There's so much to say about this man, uh, but he is just ridiculously good. His, his buster crit damage is unmatched. It's unmatched how disgusting his buster crits can go. Like, for the chunkiest health bars against Saber enemies, it's this man hitting, like, 2 million in a bus with Um... Oh, yeah. Zenobia's on this one, too. Uh... I do like Summer Anastasia, even though you guys probably haven't seen me use her that often. Um... That's just how things go, especially because MP5 plus Bob and G. Next one. Uh, okay, so like you guys have seen me do GSSRs. If I summon on mode with Shisho, I'm getting Shisho. There isn't, it, there isn't a question of if. It's always like I'm getting her. So much like Gilgamesh, this is a dead banner to me. Uh, I love Shisho, but. Mm -mm. Uh, Aresh, I have her on, at MP2 on JP, and she's good girl. I don't want to try to compare her, so probably won't get her on this account for a while. I really want Tom Lancer on this account. I said I was going to summon for her uh, before the Bunyan event, and I just didn't have the money for it. Uh, I will eventually get her, but just not right now. And Brynhild. These two are very similar. Like, 30... Like, Tumbo's buff makes her like function very well similar to Brynhild, but they're still kind of two different units. Their niches kind of overlap, but not really. Like Tomo, you know which servants are male. Brynhild, you have to look up which servants have Brynhild's glove. Because it's 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 what she views as a hero. Um and the four star options here aren't really aren't that good uh some Raiko would be the best prize uh yeah this banner i see a lot of people risking it for the biscuit because you have a one in three chance for melison melison is really 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 fucking good she is one of the most overtuned units in the entire game her summer form mirrors that as well just not as broken but yeah if you get even mp1 melison uh you're able to solo some 90 plus nodes that are meant for you to use two dps's as single target in aoe and she can just do both she can do both and you don't even need oberon to do it like it wouldn't be a full um buster farming loop so you don't need like Oberon's extra battery. Like Melison, as long as she's not uh, going into AOE on the first turn, like you don't have to worry about charge. Your worry is going to be get her, uh, get her to MP on the first turn or when you need the single target and then go from there. Um, and even then, like if it is single target wave one, like I'm pretty sure like she might be able to output enough damage to AOE and then you just use Oberon. Uh, Roma, right now, he is weaker, but with Arcade Collab, there is a Mystic Code that comes out that literally lets you put Roman debuff on everyone. Uh, so his skill uptime is not that much of a factor. He just gets better, like, with that command code. Same with Draco. Both of them benefit enormously from it, and yeah, it's easier to ramp get him ramped up. I don't like Ryoma. I have him. He is disappointing as a looper. Uh, I haven't tried using him in a CQ or like I think he would benefit the most, but 
I like his rider form more for multi core than a than the Lancer one. Let's, let's just say that. Uh, prize here will be Melt and Don Quixote. Cause this man is he he was great in Trom. Fucking fight death to all windmills. Ah. <sighs> All right, head mead. I really like her. I like the reload memes, but I also think she needs a buff at this point. It like Ozzy has been reigning supreme for way too long. It's time for a maid to come in and sweep things up. Even if she's at the top right now, I still think she needs even more love. And also she has the reloading memes. So if you use any kind of cooldown reduction, you're able to double stack this and then like it really starts to people. But she can use a power mod at this point. Power mod are super effective. Uh, Ivan, best buster farmer for riders by far, like not even a contest. Uh, yeah. Like he is his closest competition is Drake, who has a 50% battery. She's not double stacking her attack cost unless she shotguns, which isn't you don't shotgun, uh, which is what I call when you do double bitch and Atlas Mystic Code. So like any five turn cooldowns are you although like really it's like if he can plug in a support that can cool cooldown reduce it's even better uh, than atlas or like a shotgun turn where you're trying to get as much buffs in a single turn that's kind of where drake would like stand out more than ivan but ivan in just three turning he does uh i believe almost 30 percent more damage in a buster farming team uh compared to drake and then everyone else just falls off uh, Takeda Shin, Shingen. Like, it's really sad for the Buster Riders, especially when the Arts Riders are so fucking good. Habitrot, uh, Da Vinci Lily, Mordred. I'll even include Nemo Santa. Like, they're all really good, and then he can barely... He, like, his damn it. Like, he has his base cards to follow up on, but that that's pretty much it. He is able to super scope Arctic, but I think a lot of, yeah, no, 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 he is that, um, that is something he is. And I know Takeda Shingen isn't in the game right now, um, but I just wanted to bring this comparison. Like he it does, he is able to double Vich any Mystic code. And that is something damage isn't the best, but all you care about is double bitch most farming nodes if he's fighting all casters he usually doesn't need more than this this actually is enough like he could do the qp node and like one shot the final enemy like the one enemy with just this amount of damage uh but going back here Ivan's really good, and Iskandar has needed a battery buff for years, and they have never given it to him. Sag. All right. Uh, next, the other part of the riders, Bakin. This character is really, really good for multi-core. Like this is your AOE, and she is building up attack to make your single target better. If the node is three three one. Bakin is definitely someone you want to be like clearing up, clearing waves because Bakin will buff up your main DPS and give, and depending on uh, RNG luck, you might have a lot more attack buffs than you would normally have uh, in the setup. Like, it literally just depends on like him Bakin base card enough uh, or she gets the card. Constantine. I have not done his video yet, but I am very happy with uh, his MP buff. This is able to uh, 
for units that turn invul invul into solemn defense or anti-purge uh yeah anti-purge defense this they can double stack it you can have castorias and then alco or cuckoo will have their own solemn defense as well and castorias will take precedent uh over constantine's Unironically, this became one of the best banners because of Constantine's buff. Reigns is awesome. She's like one of the best like neutral supports that don't require carding. She's great. Her MP is awesome. Great for quick and arts. And then Da Vinci uh, Lily is the baby's first arts looper. Like, sorry, not sorry, but like if you get Da Vinci Rider, like you will not ever have a problem QP farming ever. Like you will just any any uh caster node, Da Vinci uh rider is just easy clap. And then your other like especially your Castorias, any other supports, they are going to be able to pop their MPs with Da Vinci. That is her selling point. She makes your supports MPs actually happen. Alright. Uh I kinda gotta pick this up. I don't want this to be too long of a video. Yeah, no, uh, this is going to be a separate. Uh, I'm probably going to separate this. Um, just a sorry giveaway along with the rest of the banner breakdown. And then this is going to be its own video. Saying that in hindsight, but okay. Next. Casters. Ilya. There aren't that many single target buster servants out there or single target buster casters. Ilya is pretty good at it. But I, I kind of would just wait for someone else. Just wait for someone else to come out. <sighs> Sorry, it's sad. But like, Ilya's good, but she's not that good. Uh, Scotty, very good. Uh, I don't think you should just completely ignore OG Scotty with Ruler Scotty coming out for NA in about two months. It's important to have this Scotty first because for servants, I have three caster cards. Sorry, not cast cards. Three quick cards. Like, Ruler Scotty is not going to do that much for you. Ruler Scotty wants at least two Buster cards. Uh, so, for Jack the Ripper, Ruler Scotty doesn't do that much. Caster Scotty just, work, it just makes more sense. Umu. Uh, as the Buster Farmer, um, she's beaten out by Ku Caster. Like, she has good utility for cqs just not really performing uh the cock wizard merlin it's merlin he like his rate ups last like days at a time instead of like a normal week so it is harder to get him if you're not going all in on him uh if you pull him on a gssr is probably one of your better chances besides just throwing money away because fucking snarny cock wizard like takes all that saint saint courts to just laugh at people for trying uh and then da vinci og uh this da vinci does get a buff in arcade and becomes a really good sub dps like this skill like chance based uh turns you into you target overcharge give him a guts mp damage it's nice this is a good buff Yeah, like she's decent as an AoE for like a 3 one, one. Uh, Probably not the best, but she's usable for there. Castoria is on this banner. If you don't have Castoria, you should be summoning on this banner. End of story. Uh, Murasaki is good as an AoE art slooper. Miss Crane is very niche. You need to know how to use her properly and you have to build your team for her. Uh, if you're not using swimsuit servants, even more reason you have to build or not swimsuit, uh, costume servants. Uh, even more you have to build for her. Uh, and I really, yeah, like Ilya, she's okay as a single target caster. I think uh, Izumo, um, Izumo no Kuni, or, yeah. Izumo is just 
so so good as a single target i love this servant on jp i wish she was high, a higher copy but it is with it is on jp and i am still salty i did not get her uh when she came out again one of those servants is it like it, i do have like charlotte but it's it is what it is if i get her i get her if i don't i don't i have her on jp i'm not gonna stress having every servant on one account when i'm like stretching wider with three accounts Assassin won. Uh, like, I'm kind of just going to skip over this one because Assassin 2 is just so much better. Leo's good, but more niche. Shu 10, if you try to make Shu 10 loop and farm, uh, you might as well just be using a Buster Servant. Uh, X, stupidly overbuffed, but still supposed to be fighting people neutral. Uh, if you're in a mixed node situation where you're fighting riders and sabers, she will shine. But outside of that, you will run into issues. And then Gramps, awesome as a solo servant. And then he gets a buff at Arcade around the same time as Da Vinci. And his skill buff is fucking a Yu-Gi-Oh card. But he really, really wants to be solo for this stuff. He wants to be solo, back of the line. Like, he is your anchor. Assassin 2. Semi Ram is definitely the weakest part of this, but ignore her. You have a 1 in 3 chance to get Kama, one of the best units in the game because of charm locking. Although there are other units now, specifically Edmund Dante's, that can do that role and do it even better because it's stun. His stun is guaranteed, commas is not. But Dante does not have super effective against many classes. It's literally only rulers and berserkers. Kama can get super effective against riders, berserkers, and alter egos, even as an assassin. Like, I want there to be a quick pretender so badly, so Kama, the, all the pressure is not on Kama for it. And then Koi and Sky, if you already have uh castoria go on this banner and get vich or no no i definitely i definitely think you should go for this banner over going for say oberon's because oberon despite me doing that two years ago despite that being the banner i did two years ago on jp i would not advise anyone to go on this banner specifically for Oberon, and I will get to that when we get to there. We're almost there, though. This banner. All these servants are very usable. Uh, Hijikata. His low HP memes, memes are fucking legit. And, like, there's, like, he literally got a CE made for him because if he had Black Rail, he would just kill himself. He would die to the curse. Like, his his low hp damage is like really legit like it is so much fucking damage uh etchon she is the best archer in the fucking game like seriously any any single target saber a good saber and they are eviscerated there's no chance of them actually surviving she is the best archer in the game sorry si best single target archer in the game raiko mommy um she gets a battery, so she can do farming. Hold up. Ah, uh, yes. I, I just needed to see this artwork real quick. Ah, uh, and then Big Bro Kintoki. I still think he needs uh, another buff, but he's like, it, he's still usable. It's just like his competition on JP is like, you can either use him to wave clear or you can use Summer Castoria, who will do about the same damage and then refund to be able to MP again. It's like opportunity costs. If you want to get him, I get it. His uh, and kill costume looks awesome. Yeah, which one is it? Yeah, like this looks so fucking sick. Like Rita draws art for both genders. 
Like I'm straight, but I can appreciate like how sick he looks in that. All right. And then we come to <laughs> if you have every single support on here, you have Castoria Bitch over on the next best banner is probably this one because it's Arjuna Alter, the former king of FGO for how much shit he could do. The best AoE archer in the game in about a year and a half because Musashi gets an MP buff that gives <laughs> that fucking gives her super effective damage against Saber class servants <laughs> of 200%. Not even the normal 150, straight up 200%. He is the best AoE archer in the fucking game. I don't know why Lasagna makes Berserker so good that they like invalidated the archer class. But Musashi. Oh my god. Like, this is a murder. This is a fucking murder. Musashi AoE MP1 hits harder. And remember, this is still not class advantage. She still gets the 50% for being a Berserker fighting a normal class. Sixty-six thousand. Um He's get doubled to 80. And then Musashi's 1.5. Musashi's at like 90 90 plus thousand. Musashi and MHX invalidate the Archer class. There are only the only advantage Archers will have is they are not as squishy, but a lot of the times if you're using those characters, you're trying to min turn CQs. So you're planning that you don't die. And if you do die, you just reset. That That's just how strong supports have uh, gone in the game. Morgan. Buster Farmer, and then also sub DPS. I have been using her more as a sub DPS lately uh, because she needs the bond points. And yeah, it is very, very different story. All right, a couple more, but this is a really good banner too. Albacusa has gotten so many buffs. It's crazy. Holmes, he got his battery buff recently, and now he can function so much better. He just like in in um like CQs with his append unlocked. Now all you need is AOE, 30 Castoria, and then he can MP. You no longer have to like really give him a whole lot of fees. Like he can start from zero and be comfy now. Dante is one of the best quick farmers in the game, still to this date. Uh, it's really hard. Uh, could use a buff, but not really needed. He, like, his buff is already on NA, which is kind of crazy. And then Jolter is going to get an animation update. And then she's also going to get her third skill, give a, get a battery. So she's going to be able to bust her farm. This banner is a whole lot more niche. Uh, Bunny Toria and BB, like, I would not advise a new player to go for these characters. If you use these two in challenge quests, it's because you actually know how they work. Um, and uh, both of them are more set up servants. They are not, they're not using them for farming. They're not that good at it. They can do it. They're just not great at it. Uh, this is like one of the best solo servants in the entire game he can have invul up almost 100 percent depending on how much he's critting but if he's solo and he's just spamming arch chains he's probably spamming his mp almost every every turn if not every other turn basis char used to be uh queen of the castle but she was so good at arts and bus buster farming they had to make uh other units a lot better just so she was not the option uh and there was actual competition like i firmly believe that space ishtar is the reason we got great base uh mps like super effective power mods we got a lot more of those 
because of Space Ishtar was just too generically good at everything. Nobu. Nobu does so much fucking damage if you're finding um, Divinity. Most of them have Sky Attribute. So she has a power mod that would have already stacked with her super effective anyway. Uh, and then like her attack buff, I think she goes to like 100% attack on turn five or some stupid shit. Like she, she's one of those buster units that doesn't suffer from the lack of attack buffs. She like she has more than enough attack buffs on her own front that she doesn't have to worry about like bitch and Oberon not giving it to her. Four more left. Karen, uh, if you do not have Black Rail or Angar Mainu, like I say Angar Mainu because he's the easiest to get the proc. Um, Karen's not going to feel that good. You also need Scotty, but she's able to Black Rail loop. And if you give her Black Rail, she actually gets an attack buff because it counts as a debuff. And she gets a 20% attack buff if she is uh, debuff. It even says it here. Avenger passive and Black Rail count for this attack buff. Moriarty. Uh, th there has not been a good enough case for me to say, like, you need to bring Moriarty. Uh, for... I feel like esports, he would be good. Like, his MP is to turn people evil so that you can make this, get this double archers down. Um, against Moon Cancer, yeah, against Moon Cancers, I think he's one of the better crit DPSs, but they're rarely ever fighting Moon Cancer bosses. And, like, as a farmer, like, Next year we get Summer Melison and like you would never choose Summer Moriarty over Summer Melison. Because like not only is base attack lower, but by like a thousand, like Melison just is a better art sleeper. Emiko, very good um Buster support able to provide so many goddamn stars on the field buffs up buster uh but not a needed servant summer comma i think has just so much goddamn competition she came out at like smack dab in the middle between um i'm trying to remember yeah it's like Every year we get arts AOEs from summer events. It's Musashi, Summer Kiara, Summer Kama, Summer Ibuki, Summer Melison. All of them like stand out or three of them stand out really well. Kiara, I love Kiara, but I know she's not that good of a unit. Like you have, like it is only CQs that she can really shine. Um, uh, Summer Kama, I think, has needs a buff. He needs to be able to charm, be able to charm more than once per turn, or once per cycle, because uh, it's tied. It is her MP damage is literally tied to her charm, so her farming is a lot weaker if she does not pop that turn one. So it's just, yeah, it's 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 not good. I love Tyra. I really wish I had her MP2. Really, really, really wish I had Tyra MP2. I just don't right now. It's, it's got to happen eventually, but Tyra is one of the best solo servants in the game. It's hyper aggressive like gameplay. Um, she want she wants to be anchored in the back, like uh, King Hassan. But she can play nice if you have supports on the field, like. She wants to get killed, but her guts uptime is high enough that even if she's not getting killed, you're able to get back to it, like in a reasonable time. Kiara, like, and like I said, Kiara is a higher skill unit than a lot of other summer arts AOEs. 
She's not meant for farming, but I've used her multiple times in CQs and have experienced like zero problems. Like she clears everything. Like it's super, super comfy. Three more. Okita, Okitan has gotten so many fucking buffs. We're still waiting on the MP buff. That is what she's lacking. Kiara, if you have her at MP1, you're not killing in the first hit as much as you need to for a three hit arts unit. MP2, I'm told, makes it significantly more comfy. Uh, and it would make sense because you get more damage, you hit harder on the first hit, and then you would loot better. Melt, I've already said I need to summon on this banner. I really like Melt. I really want MP2. Um, like, I have her bond points already, so there's no farming I need to do. She is, like, ready to go. Abigail, I don't like this character, like, design-wise. I do think her MP needs to be reduced cooldown, and then she will function so much better. Uh, but I have never gotten OG Abigail, so complete the collection. Hokusai, have this unit on uh, JP. Haven't really gotten to build it because of skill or... Yeah, the mat requirements stuck for so long. Uh, so yeah, she's kind of been in purgatory for a long time, but she's almost ready to go. Ah, oh, all right, next one, King Brotea. She just got her third skill buff, and she, the more stacks of um, eight infinite growth she has, the more MP damage she gets. And since fully ramped up King Protea has like 10 stacks, we're talking, I think, around 200% MP damage. No, 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 100, 100. You could double stack this, but you're not, you would not be thinking about double bitch. Like the, the hoops you would have to go through to double stack this it's just so stally and i can't see like you being able to keep keep coin and sky alive long enough for you get to get 10 stacks of this uh summer abigail i still think she would function better if as a su support but they want summer abigail i guess to actually be able to do farming herself but I think she would be a very good alternative to Oberon for units that have 50% charges if her battery was targeted. If this was a targeted 50% battery, then you could be adding Buster Res down and a whole lot of defense down that, and you don't have to worry about your unit being brick like you do with Oberon. I stand by that's how I want this servant to be buffed. It is what it is. They're probably not going to do that. Van Gogh. Van Gogh is one of the most broken characters in the fucking game. Regardless if you're um, not bringing existence outside the domain for 100% crit damage, it's still 30% attack buff. It's still terror spamming. It, there's still a base crit, crit buff. And you still get 10 stars per turn. This is still, like, regardless of if you're buffing outside the domain, this is still, like, one of the best like mps in the game like for any kind of crit you uh usage corners with existence outside the domain just benefit the most from it and van gogh can be used as a dps I love van gogh uh jock and van gogh are kind of the reasons i'm so fucking obsessed with uh corners and yeah i i like i love this character so much gameplay wise Voyager, uh, they have thrown so many buffs Voyager's way. I think he's about actually about to get another buff, or this is going to be his first buff. Uh, strengthening one, yes, part 15, seventh anniversary. So Voyager is going to get his quick buff, and then later he is going to get his MP buff. Yang uh against Berserkers this is a nightmare. This is a nightmare for them to fight uh, because they will attack her. She will burn them and then get power mod. She is one of the easiest units to get a uh, honey lake 
like going. She puts the burns on and she does extra damage against burned enemies. This stacks multiplicatively with Honey Lake. Uh, would you and and don't just think because Black Rail is 80% damage, um, it would just straight up be better. It's not because MP damage and power mods are in the same part of the formula. They add into each other. So your choice is 40% more damage overall or only 80% MP damage. That's kind of like kind of how you have to think about it with the angry Bay. But she is Honey Lake has her on it and it makes the most sense to use it on her. And then it also gives her invo pierce as an added bonus too. Solid, but not easy to determine. Okay. It's the last banner. Oberon is on here. But there is... And the quality of this banner, for me personally, this is one of my favorite banners. I, ha I had... I had PTSD with Bunyan. Uh, not anymore. I don't have that trauma anymore because I got MP3 Daiko. So the trauma is gone. Uh, even though I have MP4 Bunyan, don't get to use her that often. And everyone else on this banner, I think is super solid. Bitch Darkness stocks have gone up since multi-core has like really started being like less like hidden in the way. And like, uh, I start using multi-core more. Um, a lot of other people start using multi-core more for the 90 plus plus because there's only so much you can buff and you don't need like you don't need super high buffing for aoe's if the boss has like 900 thousand hp like start buffing someone else uh doman really good for like so many servants all they have to be is chaotic evil and he will roid the shit out of them 100 percent crit damage 40 percent attack can AoE wave clear and insta kill enemies. Doman's really good. Bazette is a broken character. And I don't mean that in the way that, oh, her skills are so good. No, no. She is fundamentally a broken character that breaks the game of FGO by allowing you to get kills on enemies during their fucking turn. So if they have multi proc guts like Herc. But that just powers through it and you don't have to worry. She completely invalidates quests that do not have break bars. If they don't have break bars, Bazette is going to min turn the shit out of it. And there is nothing any other servant can do to like get ahead of her. She is the only servant in the game that can min turn in two turns an enemy that has two full break bars because she will kill them after the second bar, bar we proc. You cannot break a bar with her MP. It has to be with her face cards. Uh, just like dots. Can't break bars. Sucks, but it's true. Um, yeah, she's really good. Jock de Malay. This is one of my favorite characters in the game. All like I still think she needs one more buff, but buff uh to really stand out, but she is just so fun. She is so fun with her curse gameplay. Her crits are nasty. She works well. She exists outside the domain, works with Van Gogh. And I just love quick all this stuff. And then Oberon is Oberon. I do not. The odds of you actually getting him on this are one in six. While in pretty much every other GSSR banner, there are better odds. I was Bunyan showed up and I almost like cried because I already had MP3 Bunyan and I went on this GSR for Oberon and I didn't and I thought I wasn't gonna get him. But I got two characters and I got Oberon in that GSR. Not everyone is going to have my luck. It is so rare that he will actually pull more than one SSR and a GSR. Despite the fact that I've done it multiple times, don't go into GSSRs expecting that. 
And with that, this this is the GSSR banner breakdown. So the little recording hiccup. Uh, this is gonna be its own separate video. I'm gonna have the GSSR giveaway go with the rest of uh, anniversary, and this will be its own video. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.